Hello, in this lecture we will explore the mechanisms of elastic and plastic deformation. This will require us to understand the bonding in materials as well as the microstructure. This structure property relationship really is the essence of materials engineering. So if we look at the stress versus strain plot, we know that there are two major regions. We have the elastic region where all deformation is recoverable and then we have the plastic deformation, which is non-recoverable. However, we should ask ourselves some pretty important questions. Why is the elastic region fully recoverable? Why is the plastic region non-recoverable? And why do materials have different Young's moduli? Let's first look at the elastic deformation, and let's choose a metal specimen. And if we had a powerful enough microscope and we could zoom in, we would see the individual atoms like so within the metal. Now these metal atoms are joined together by metallic bonds. And these could be represented by little springs which are joining one atom to its nearest neighbour. So if we now apply a load on that metal specimen, what we see is that the atoms move apart ever so slightly. So what's happened is that the bonds between the atoms have stretched when we apply that load and we get a measurable amount of deflection. Now when we remove the load the atoms spring back to their original position. So elastic deformation is fully reversible and this is happening as a direct result of the stretching of the bonds in between the atoms. So therefore, the amount of deformation that we get, in other words, the Young's modulus, will depend on the strength of the bond. So if we have very weak bonds, when we apply the load, it will stretch a lot. But if we have very strong types of bonds between the atoms, it won't stretch nearly as much. So the strength of the bonds is very important and will govern what the Young's modulus is of the material. Now the other thing to take into account is the number of bonds or the density of those bonds and which way they point. And that can have a dramatic effect also on the Young's modulus. Now what I've plotted up here is the Young's modulus of all the different types of materials. So this is a log plot and it's plotted up against the log of the density. This plot was generated using the CS software, which you will be using in your design component of this unit. Now from this plot, we can see at a glance all the different groupings of the materials. And so here we note that all the metals fall within this envelope shown here. And similarly, we have ceramics up here. Uh, we have composites, we have polymers, natural materials, foams, and elastomers. So you can see at a glance all the different values of the Young's modulus. So what's changing here are the strength of the bonds and the directionality of those bonds. So focusing here on metals and alloys, we see that many metals have values of the Young's modulus of about 100 gigapascal. And if we look up here, we see uh, steel having a Young's modulus of 200 gigapascal. We see here for polymers, they have a much smaller Young's modulus, so around about 1 to 2 gigapascal, for example. So these are much lower, and that's because they have much weaker bonding between uh, the atoms in the material. I'd just like to note here the composite materials. Now these composite materials are made out of two different types of materials combined, say a polymer and a ceramic. And these composite materials have Young's moduli comparable to that of steel. So this is carbon reinforced epoxy up here. So it, has, it can have a modulus uh, at the upper end of about 150 to 200 gigapascal, which is similar to steel but it is much, much lighter compared to steel, a much lower density. And this makes them very interesting and important types of materials, uh, particularly in the aerospace industry. So let's have another look at the atomic view. 
So here is a metal specimen at rest. So there are the atoms and they're joined together by the metallic types of bonds. This time we will apply a load and take it past its yield strength of the material and so we'll get an amount of deformation or elongation in the material which has an elastic component and also a plastic component. So the bond stretch just as we saw before but something else happens. What we find is that whole planes of atoms start slipping past one another giving it additional elongation. Now when we remove the load what happens is that we recover the elastic component okay so the bonds spring back but these sheared planes do not go back to their original position there's nothing forcing them to go back to the original position so this shearing of the planes is called slip and it happens when these closed pack arrangement of these atoms slide past one another this concludes this lecture.